So this is my new 24 volt solar power system that's capable of inputting 4,000 watts of solar power to be able to power a 3000 watt pure sine wave inverter. In this system, I designed it so that you can level one charge a Tesla or any other electric car on the market today with 120 volts. This system is really cool because we have an automatic transfer switch. So if our off-grid solar batteries get too low, it will power our loads with the grid. So this is like a hybrid system. You can use the grid or you can use solar power and it's extremely cheap. Everything on this board only cost a thousand dollars. The biggest cost determinant factor is how many batteries you buy and how many solar panels you buy. So if you buy, you know, 4,000 watts of solar at a rate of 50 cent per watt, let's say $2,000 plus whatever it is for permit fees, and then however you plan to mount it. And then for the batteries, the bare minimum that you want to spend is $4,000. And then it can go upwards of, you know, eight to 10,000, depending on how many days of autonomy that you want for your system. We also have a DC to DC converter, 40 amp, and this converts 24 volts down to 12 volts. So we can still use 12 volt appliances with this system. We also have a battery capacity monitor and the shunt is right here. And we also have a battery protect. So you can actually use this system with like a do it yourself lithium iron phosphate battery. And the battery protect is connected at the output to the inverter and the converter but at the input, we have the solar charge controller cables. And honestly, it's a pretty easy system to build. I mean, you could power a small house off of this no problem, and almost anybody can build it. It took me about two to three hours to do everything. I mean, you can see all of the wires here, and I'm also gonna have high definition pictures on my website if you wish to design the system. Some of the constraining factors and why it looks so ugly wire-wise is because I had to cram so much on this board. In my RV, I don't have that much room. So I had to like smash it all in here. I would not have these wires sticking out over here and all of these bins and stuff if I had more room. But personally, I like to see how much I can cram on this board anyways is a challenge. So it was really fun for me. So for our loads of an electric car, we want this to output 2.4 kilowatts continuously, no problem. And so for me, I only have to worry about 100 amps at 24 volts. So I used four gauge welding cable that's pure copper to run the inverter. But if you plan to use 3000 watts continuous, what you're gonna have to do instead is use two gauge wire for everything that connects the inverter. Also, make sure that your shunt is large enough. For me in this system, a 100 amp shunt will work really well. If you're pushing the 3000 watts continuously for like a house system, you're gonna have to get like a 300 or 500 amp shunt. But yeah, it's mostly a very simple system with off the shelf components. I just wanted to show you guys that you can build this. And for me personally, this is gonna be my new main system that I can test new components on. For me, I'm only adding 1,200 watts of solar panel input. I should also add that even though these can handle 2,000 watts input at 24 volt battery system, they are only capable of delivering that 80 amps at 24 volts. So that means the charging power will only be 2,200 watts, but it can safely input 4,000 watts total. I've also noticed that lately in designing systems, I love using this because it has a short circuit protection as well, so I don't have to buy more fuses. And also using this as like a main positive cable distribution spot, because I have all these cables attached right here, and then using a single negative ground bus bar makes it so I can wire everything with these two common spots. And so the battery is connected just to the battery protect, and this has short circuit protection built into it of 100 amps at 24 volts. So that means that this will work really well for my loads. But if you guys plan to use the full 3000 watts, you're gonna have to get four battle born batteries or whatever lithium iron phosphate battery cells that have that discharge rate capability. Also, the only thing I see load terminals as being good for is, is reference voltage because this is a solid connection to the battery. So for this automatic transfer switch that needs to know the voltage of the battery, it's okay to attach it to the load terminals. If not, I would have to fuse these connections on my own and that'd be a pain in the butt and more wire. So I really like just doing positive here and then ground to the negative terminal bus bar and I'm done. 
Also, look at the size of this thing. I mean, it's about the size of me, but it's pretty tiny considering what it can do. This is a totally off-grid system. Typically, they are a lot bigger. And it doesn't even weigh that much. It's pretty light. You could shove this in the back of your closet or somewhere in your garage. Also, I have these circuit breakers super close to the charge controller because it's not to protect the wire. It's to protect the charge controller if it shorts or something bad happens. This wire is protected from the short circuit protection down here. And this copper wire is thick enough to be able to trip. So all of these wires are protected. Also, there's no fuse right here because this has its own overcurrent protection. This has overcurrent protection. And then we have this fuse for the converter input. But everything charge and discharge efficiency wise, it's around 90%. And most of the losses are going to come from this. Um, this also has the same percent loss considering what we're stepping voltage down to. I can get like 95% efficiency sometimes, but when it heats up, it's like 91 to 92%. This is going to be like 89 to 91% efficiency. And then Kolenbeck efficiency for these is really good. So yeah, it's an overall very efficient system. So let me know what you guys think in the comments section below. I really hope this will help some of my viewers in other countries that are like third world nations and you guys want to power your house, but with off the shelf components that are cheap because this could really help some of you guys. So this is my main solar power system, but I want to be able to charge a Tesla or a Chevy Bolt. So what I'm going to do is rebuild it with more components and make it stronger so that we can power electric vehicles. And so to design this system, we need to figure out how much power we need to charge these electric vehicles continuously. And I looked up some of the charts for Tesla, and this is a good reference for all of them, because if you can charge a Tesla, you can charge the other ones because they have the fastest charge capability. So you have level one, level two, and level three. Level three is insane. It's 480 volts and 300 amps. We're talking 140,000 watts of power going into a Tesla. Like that is so much power, it's insane. Level two is 240 volts and 80 amps. And so if you want to build a solar power system to produce this much power, you'd have to buy a bunch of land and spend like 30 to $50,000 in solar panels alone just to charge up at this speed. Like this is incredible speeds. So what we're limited to is level one charging and that is 15 to 20 amps at 120 volts. So that's 1.4 kilowatts upwards of 2.4 kilowatts. And I can build that. I can trickle charge a Tesla with solar power, but the other options, it's unrealistic. If you want to charge a Tesla quickly, um, you're not going to be able to unless you spend a lot of money and you have a huge solar power system in your backyard. So for most people, the cheapest and easiest way to charge their electric vehicle with solar power is to use a grid tie system. You have a local installer, put a bunch of solar panels on the roof of your house, then they install a grid tie inverter and or a power wall or a small lithium battery bank. And this will offset your costs and you can buy and sell power from the grid and your electricity bill will be reduced at the end of the month. But I have a couple problems with these grid tie systems. First off, a safety feature that grid tie inverters and other you know power walls and stuff have is that if the grid goes down it will turn off power generated by the solar panels and you can't really use it and this is to prevent backfeeding the system and so what I want to do is I want to design a system that can charge an electric vehicle whether the grid is on or off so what we're going to do to accomplish this is use the automatic transfer switch and we're going to build a full size off-grid solar power system with batteries. And this will be scalable and we will be able to use all the power that we produce. So instead of having excess power halfway through the day and selling it back to the grid, I can store it in my batteries or in an electric vehicle and I can use it at night and I can slowly charge an electric vehicle whenever I feel like. All the power that I produce can be used by me instead of wasting it and selling it back to the electric company. And so for a battery based system, the downside is that when the batteries are full, you have nowhere to put the power. 
So you always want to have the batteries like below 90% state of charge. So all the power that your solar panels produce is actually being used by something. And so for me, when my panels produce a lot of power throughout the day, it will heat up water because I have an electric water heater. So I have somewhere to put that excess electricity. So that means all of the power that my solar array produces is being used by me. I'm not selling it back to the power company at reduced cost. I'm using all of it for me and I also want to do this as cheap as possible and I want to supplement a grid tie system so we're gonna have an automatic transfer switch so if my system cannot produce enough power to charge the Tesla such so as during night and the batteries are depleted an automatic transfer switch will switch it directly to grid power so we can still charge regardless of how much my solar power system is producing and for my system all we're gonna do is we're gonna beef up the inverter so we're gonna have a 3000 watt pure sine wave inverter and then we're gonna have two Two of these which I can over panel to 4,000 watts and so we'll have a constant steady stream of like 2,080 watts and that's enough to power level one charging for the Tesla and it will be able to charge all the other um, charging methods for a Chevy Bolt or Volt or a Prius plug-in hybrid